Hello, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, wherever you are tuning in from. Welcome to another edition of Latok and VCTV, where we get to address major issues, trends, things that are happening around you that affect all of us. Um, today, we'll be having um, another interesting topic. We'll be talking about um, hybrid work and investment in hybrid, hybrid workspace. And um, today we have uh, a guest um, who will introduce himself much later on. And um, I welcome you all, all our audience from all over the world to um, join us, pay attention and participate. Fortunately for you, you can um, contribute, you can make suggestions, make posts, we'll view them in real time and answer some of the questions you might have. And then we're looking forward to um, interesting and engaging time with you all. And also, this is another opportunity for startups and entrepreneurs out there to join the Latokan VCTV team to um, pitch their projects on our platform. You see, if, you're, if, you, if, you get, uh, if you feel your project is exciting enough and worthy of the kind of attention and fundraising it needs, um, you can just reach out to me or any member of the Latokan team, and we'll arrange a pitching session for you. So um, today, we're going to be talking about investments in the hybrid um, space. I mean, the hybrid work is a traditional mix of um, office-based work and remote um, working. And the concept mainly works for jobs and tasks that involve large amounts of like screen time. Now, the advancement in dig digitization and the shift in work to a more work-based um, economy in many countries has made the option for remote work more realistic for employers and employees. Specifically, a uh, Gartner survey of company leaders revealed that 82% of them plan to let workers work remotely some of the time, and 47% of them are ready to let workers work full time going forward. Now, just before I go into the questions, I'd like um, our panelists today, um, Gary, please give us a brief about yourself, your experience with remote work, hybrid work, and let the audience get to know who you are in this regard. Great, Nathaniel. Thanks for uh, bringing me on board today. Uh, my name is Gary Fowler, and I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor and writer. Uh, oh, uh, I'm located in Silicon Valley, although right now I am in Palm Beach, Florida. So I love artificial intelligence and quantum computing. Um, I've done 17 companies, uh, and two of those have been uh, become unicorns. I was on the original management team of Click Software, which was sold to Salesforce for $1.35 billion uh, about two years ago. And also, nice. I am the co-founder of uh, Eva.ai, one of the top workforce management companies, AI workforce management companies uh, in the world today. I founded that company with the billionaire uh, Dr. David Yang. Uh, from Russia, located now in Silicon Valley. So we love artificial intelligence. I mean, here we are with uh, the world dynamically shifted in the last year to a lot of remote work. So love it. Uh, as I said, AI is the new electricity. So today I am the co-founder, CEO, and president of GST, Get Shit Done Venture Studios, a premier AI and quantum venture studio located in Silicon Valley. And our job is to help companies go global, help companies become unicorns, and uh, we look at ourselves as unicorn breeders. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. I mean, Gary, you are an investor. I mean, 17 companies, that's that's huge. I'm sure they are uh, relatively successful. Now, do investors look kindly on the future of hybrid work as investment worthy based on what has happened in the past one year? Is it investment worthy and why? Some people genuinely believe that there'll be a return to traditional work systems. I mean, but I mean, you're an investor. What are the things that you see? What are the things that make you convinced that hybrid work is the future and investment worthy? Well, I mean, look at a year, one year ago, a little over a year ago, actually, McKinsey came out with a report that 92% of the companies within the next 10 years would digitally transform. Well, they didn't realize what was going to happen is they had to do it in a couple of months or they were going to die. So now the situation is worldwide. We've gotten used to, um, I don't know about you, but 
I had to commute four hours uh, back and forth to work every day. Two yeah, hours. We all did. We all did. In the evening, and I would go into my office. You know, I would go in. I'd had to leave in Silicon Valley at 5.30 or 6 to beat the traffic in. I had to be in my office at 8. I had to leave my office either early or later, which generally is what I did. I would leave at 8 or 9 o'clock at night. So uh, coming back, depending on the traffic, it could take me, you know, up to two hours. So imagine how much of your time, four hours a day, and if you're doing it five days a week, that's 20 hours wasted time. Look how inefficient um, we were. And look at how many more expenses we had. And I'm, I was just calculating my uh, uh, travel expenses compared to uh, uh, last year and the year before. And especially in 2019, my travel expenses were, you know, uh, upwards of about $100,000. So, you know, I spent a lot of money. And at the same time, here you are, right, in Nigeria. Here I am in Palm Beach, Florida uh, right now talking to, uh, you know, Carol, who's in um, – in uh, Singapore. So, I mean, we can basically transfer anywhere. And I remember I was one of the early, early Zoom users. Uh, the uh, One of the VCs that invested in Zoom, invested in Eric in Zoom, uh, said, hey, you got to try this out, this really cool technology. I remember sending the links out to all my friends and they said, why would I want to do Zoom? Why would I use Skype? And I said, this stuff is really cool. Or WhatsApp. I said, this stuff's really cool. Really, really cool. And here we are, right? And so um, StreamYard, Zoom, all these incredible technologies to be able to work in this new way. You know, let's say this was going to happen anyhow because it's, it is highly efficient. Look at, look at India. It's the first time in 30 years we've been able to see the Himalaya Mountains because of traffic, reduction in traffic. That's right. And it's got a chance, time to heal. So... In terms of the future, this model, this hybrid work model, absolutely will be in the future. In fact, you know, we're still we're still at the height. The cases of COVID are still high, and this new brand of uh, COVID coming out that's highly contagious is around. I mean, it's like a Russian roulette. Do you really want to go out? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I really think about it. I was watching the other day. I went out, and I, I mean, it's just this is how crazy life is, right? I went in the bank and I had a mask on, and I thought if I did this a year ago, they'd throw me in jail. That's right. That's you know, true. I walk in with a black mask on, and now you get in oh, trouble yes. you're fine for not having it. You can't go in without a mask. How the world has changed, you know? And, exactly. Um, so, do you feel? Do you feel it's um, this industry um, as an investor? Do you think that? It's um, investment worthy. And uh, what um, space do you think this investment is? It in software, technology, healthcare, transportation. Obviously, it's going to suffer. Um, transportation will see reduction in patronage. Um, and real estate will suffer a bit. You know. So, what do you think? I mean, there's a, there's lots of impacts, right? So one is you know in terms of our health, our mental health. You know, the situation is we need to connect. So having venues just like VCTV where people can tune in to feel part of something is really important. So uh, in terms of our well-being, I mean, we this is the first time. I mean, doctors didn't want to do telemedicine before in the U.S. I mean, there's telemedicine happening everywhere. Well, then there's a democratization opportunity. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in Nigeria, uh, whether you're in uh, the UK, where they're in Russia, it doesn't matter uh, because intellectual capacity is evenly spread and opportunities aren't. And so now it's really leveled the playing field. So I love that, right? Everybody can play in a game, right. really leveled the playing field. So it's the best move forward. Um, and so in terms of health, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's mental health issues. You got to keep yourself active. You got to think differently, think positive. You know, there's some some of that that's critically important. And it's taken us, you know, the other thing is, Nathaniel, we hadn't had a really a time to be able to look at ourselves, right? We were so busy doing things that we didn't have a chance to ride bikes. Bike sales are up, what, 80%? You can't, oh, I bought really? it. It's huge. I mean, you can't even get a bike 
Right now, it's extremely difficult to buy a bike uh, in the U.S. And I, it's not one of the places in the world. It's many of the places in the world have the same thing because bikes are in huge demand. Why? Because it's a simple pleasure. Families get time to spend together. You know, my dog is sleeping right here alongside of me. I would never had my dog sleeping alongside of me when I was having a meeting before. But my basset hound is right here. She likes to stay with me. So, oh, awesome. you know, so we got, we got, you know, we have simple pleasures and board games came back and people had a chance to spend more time with their family and their spouse. I mean, there's no choice. So you got to know one another in an entirely different way, which wasn't possible before. So what I'm saying is it really gave us a 360 degree view, a more integrated view of, uh, view of our life. Of course, it's going to affect construction because people aren't going in offices. Who's going to rent the buildings? Right. The, there's issues around who's going to rent. The other thing is that places like uh, Silicon Valley, which is where my office and, and house are, the, it's a little different now because people are moving now down to Miami. And why? Because taxes are a lot cheaper. It's warm and nice. Uh, and houses are a lot cheaper. They're probably a third of the cost. So, you know, people are moving around. The taxes, the individual income taxes in California are 12% higher than they are in Florida, 12%, right, on the high level. So you start adding not that up, it starts to be not as interesting. Then you take house prices. The average in Palo Alto for a house is probably $2.5 million, right, in, in uh, Silicon Valley. If you look at that same house here, it's about $700,000, uh, maybe less. So wow. the, price, the price of housing is a lot less. So... Anyhow, we, we've changed a lot. We, we can work in a very different kind of way. We can work remotely where we want. People are moving around. Uh, work can be done on a global basis a lot differently in a decentralized way compared to before. So it's exciting. In terms of investment, you know, my business at Eva, Eva.ai, is one of the top uh, AI HR tech companies dealing with remote employees. At the beginning of the pandemic, our business was up uh, 38 times. This year, we'll have, you know, our business will grow 10 times. 10 times. It's that big right now. So because people need to figure out how is, so if I have an office in Lagos and I have teams all over the world, how do I know how my teams are feeling? Well, traditionally before, what would happen is you would do once a year, we'd do a uh, review, right? You would come exactly. in. Do a review. But the thing is, that's not how life works, right? It constantly changes. By the time that year goes by, everything could change. A person could leave. And a high-value employee, you wouldn't want leaving the company. So what we said is uh, I went down and put together an artificial intelligence to be able to understand and check the pulse, what's happening with that employee at any one point in time. Also, are they going to leave the company? So I can tell six months in advance if somebody's going to leave the company. Wow. Imagine. So if you got a high value employee before it's a problem, why do they leave? Because they don't get along with coworkers or they don't get along with their boss. Wow. So obviously, I mean, you are talking about, I was going to ask you later on, is does AI have a place in the future of hybrid work? And this is just a prime example of um, technology having uh, a, a space. I mean, and any um, project or employee that's looking to um, reduce um, the way staffs live. I mean, that's a useful example. But apart from AI as an investor, what other technologies do you feel are investment worthy? And what um, technologies do you feel are coming out of this new um, trend, this shifting trend? Um, is there any new technology in healthcare or in, in workspace, cloud computing or something? Yeah, I mean, this thing is, so this whole hybrid environment is breeding a lot. So, you know, again, Nathaniel, AI is a new electricity. Think about it. The, the amount of data that we have in front of us is 40 zettabytes. 40 zettabytes of data is enough. If you take CDs and stack them or DVDs, one on top of another, would go to the moon back and forth 29 times. That movie, that amount of data is growing at almost 70% per year, 70, think about it. Your personal cloud, Nathaniel, yours, has about 300,000 items in your personal cloud. 
You've got Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Slack, all kinds of data sources. Could be up to 20 data sources. Now think about it. Now, how many times do you say, I know that file exists, but I, I can't find it? Why? I've either forgotten the location or the keywords. How many times? Like, and how many several, times? Several. Several times. Okay, yeah. Right? And so we are in a state of what I call infobesity. And that was a term coined by Alvin Toffler in a book, Future Shock, back in the 70s. And infobesity essentially is around us. So today you have 300,000 items. That number doubles every year. With the Internet of Things, you will have 10 million items in five years. How in the world? And how many times today do you, somebody says, I sent you a message. Did you get it? And you're like, where did you send it? Well, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, WeChat. You know, how in the world do you know? And I don't know about you, but, you know, I check Messenger a lot. I do check LinkedIn. How many yeah. times do you pick up your mobile phone, your cell phone every day? How many times do you think you pick it up and look at it? I, I, I mean, for close to four hours a day, I checked because I have this app on my, my phone. I checked. I spent time on my mobile device close to four hours a day. And I'm sure it could be more. Now, think about it. That's more time than you spend with a significant other talking to them, right? Yeah, right. And yeah, so the right. is, you know, we're becoming the singularity. The phone's becoming extensions of who we are. If you if you don't have your phone in your hand for a half an hour, what happens? <laughs> I feel edgy. I feel like I'm missing out on something. I'm, hey, I'm, right. I'm, I'm actually missing out. I'm missing out. Exactly. And that's what happens. So, you know, you talk about a hybrid work, these technologies where we can come closer, we need to understand data better. We're inundated with data. So as a worker at your house, you got to be able to, you know, we're, what's going to evolve is we're going to have not a smart, but an intelligent assistant that'll be like a guardian angel that's going to keep cyber attacks away, that's going to help us understand the data around us. It's going to help us in a, in a uh, manage our lives because our brain can process 60,000 complex transactions per day. But when you start using things like quantum computers and data coming at us, you know, most people don't realize. In fact, I'm writing a, a new article on quantum tunneling. But quantum computers can process information that would take a supercomputer, right? Um, 10,000 years can process it in 200 seconds. 200 seconds, imagine. So we are going to be inundated. And as your personal cloud keeps increasing, there's going to be two classes of people, the people that understand data and the people that don't. And then people exactly. don't, they're going to be, and it doesn't matter. It's like Bitcoin, right? I have friends in Bitcoin that have close to $50 billion in Bitcoin. And they're just, there are a lot of average people that had put a lot of money in, right? Early on, they invested to retirement money, et cetera. Now they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions. So where we are with data, it's going to be the same thing. Your data is critically important. The people that can manage the data and understand what's happening are going to live longer, right? Because mm -hmm. we're going to understand that, um, you know, we'll have a smart pill that goes inside of us. Imagine being a remote worker at home with a smart pill. It says, listen, there's a little problem. You're vitamin D deficient. I just ordered vitamin D from uh, Amazon. It'll be delivered in two days. And I called your doctor up to be get your check because, you know, your blood sugar level a little bit. So we're in this day, um, age where a lot of the systems that we have in place today are going to be a lot different. You're not going to need to go to the doctor the same way you did before. You could be a worker at your house, sitting down at your desk, and all of a sudden, you know, it's course corrected. You're going to have, you're going to, your guardian angel, and I say that, you know, from my standpoint, that this day, this AI that's very intuitive, that is at the very highest level that is intelligent is going to be out there doing a lot of the things that you have to think about today and making it Monday. That's already happening, by the way. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Gary, I remember the last time we had a similar conversation about Jarvis, no, Morpheus, about Morpheus and how he communicates with you and all that. And I'm, 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 I'm very, very 
excited about that opportunity. But let's come down to Africa and developing worlds where these data are not even, um, there's no central body responsible for gathering this data. So what, what, what next? What next for, um, and I'm sure that for me, working from home is just, I'm one of the very few you know, enjoying this opportunity. So what, 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 what's, what does this say for investors looking um, at the future of work in the developing um, or emerging market space? Will they um, focus on technology or rather just collecting data? And I mean, it's, it's really tricky. You guys have it all figured out there. We've not even um, built a foundation over here. So what, what would you say for an investor looking at um, hybrid work or AI or data collection from this area? Well, you know, I was, you know, just to parallel it, I went to Russia first time in 1992. I live in Russia 14 years. So Russia at the time, had, it was at the collapse of the Soviet Union. There weren't a lot of systems in place, really smart people, really nice people, but a lot of challenges. And so I saw with the, the evolution, how fast it took place. You're going to be surprised. I mean, think about it. I had dinner with one of the wealthiest persons in Nigeria in California. And you are in the cusp. Uh, Africa is rising. And the question is, how fast does it do it? And I can tell you right now, I have three African startups within GSD. And I have one from uh, South Africa and two from Nigeria today. Yes. So I can tell you that it's rising very, very uh, quickly. I mean, most people don't realize that Nigeria is, what, a 206 million people. It's a large country. Second yes. is Ethiopia, about 100 million. So there's an incredible opportunity of some very uh, – I remember before it used to be the Nigerians were the best scammers on the planet because they're really good business people, right? Yeah, exactly. And now those same people are turning it to things like AI and how to build companies, which is really important. But the other thing is, is connecting to the rest of the world. The one thing Africa didn't do before is connect to the rest of the world. Just like you're doing right now, this is actually tying everything together. And that's really important is getting information because it's like steering a ship. If you're developing a technology or product, you need to be able to course correct. So in terms of uh, hybrid work, you're, you're going to be way ahead of everybody else because the models that you have in place are going to be new, right? The infrastructure will be new to be able to sort uh, support those endeavors. That's right. I'm very, very bullish on uh, what's happening all over Africa. And it's going to happen very, very quickly because you'll start to see the course corrections as we are now, right? It's going to be money will start flowing in, companies, unicorns are being developed. Those unicorns will go global. They'll do IPOs. They'll do all kinds of interesting things, acquisitions. There'll be a lot of visibility. There's a lot of support. And, you know, we're on here with VCTV is one more example. Here we are, exactly. right? And exactly. Sorry, Gary, just before you go on, I just like to um, remind all our viewers right now watching us, if you have a question to ask, if you have a comment to make, you can post it on our LinkedIn page, on our YouTube page. I'll get to see it here and maybe ask a question and get it answered. And if you're a startup or entrepreneur looking to pitch a project to someone like Gary, get across to me, uh, to the team. We'll get your pitch prepared and book a pitching session. I mean, it's an awesome time, like Gary said, to connect the whole world and you should be taking advantage of it. Um, so, sorry, Gary. Sorry about that interruption. I mean, the thing is, listen, listen, I'm a country boy from Pennsylvania. I grew up on a farm. Of, I grew in a village of 500 people on the side of a mountain. My neighbors were Amish, which are, uh, I don't know if you know Amish, but they had no electricity. Yeah. Uh, no electricity. They're very uh, humble people, but those are the kind of neighbors. In order for you, for me to go play with my friend, I had to ride a bike six miles to go see my friend. So I grew up in the mountain. And what I'm saying is, you know, when you're, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. It matters who you are, right? So right. each other person, each one of your audience today can really chart their own uh, destiny. I did a TED talk a few years ago about the passion, optimism, and visualization. And part of being home and being successful is believing in yourself, Nathaniel, and believing that you can do it. 
and keeping a positive frame of mind. You got to right. continually refocus. And I say, somebody said, well, what's it like? It's you can't let the negative stuff get you down. Think about the positive in your life. When it's like stubbing your toe in the morning when you get up, if you hurt your toe, you know how other things start to happen. You lose your keys, your wallet's gone, you have a car accident, you scream at your girlfriend. I mean, it's like the whole day. It's like, why did one thing trigger everything? So you got to reframe your mind. You got to really reset. And being home and working out of the house is the same way because, you know, you got your wife, your your friends, your your parents around. You got to reframe it and turn things into a positive. Explore. And, you know, part of being at home is, you know, in terms of hybrid work is how can we keep us collaborate with other people? So part of uh, is being a human is, you know, the uh, there was a book by Viktor Frankl called Man's Search for Meaning. Is how can we work together? How can we create this commonality? We like to be in a group, right? On one sure. side, we can succeed, but we like to be in a group and have that group behavior. So adaption. So this hybrid, how do we collaborate better? There's going to be incredible technologies come out to help us collaborate better. There's going to be hyper-personalization technologies that come out. For instance, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have our uh, VR, AR, X on where we're in a virtual office environment, right? So you're literally in that environment sitting at a conference room with your colleagues and you're looking at them kind of like, uh, what was it, the Avengers? You know, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody in remote location, holograms and all that. Uh, exactly. And the thing is, we're not that far away from it. So those technologies are going to happen because we want to be close to one another. At the same time, this has afforded us a phenomenal opportunity, corporations, to understand that, you know, with all the challenges we have in the planet with uh, sustainability, with pollution, all kinds of things, we understand that the earth has had a chance to heal itself, right? As I said, the Himalayas, it, this is the first time in 30 years you were able to see the Himalayas. That's right. And so we have had a chance to see we can have a positive impact. On the other side of it, being home, you know, we've got more tolerant with kids running around or dogs or cats or whatever. People are tolerant. Before it's like, oh, you know. Grouchy, it, grouchy greens. Yeah, who, he or she is working at their house. All they're doing is playing. Now the situation is it's kind of nice to see somebody bring their kid in or their dog or cat, because it just shows the humanity of the person, right? We've become more human because we we care about each other in an entirely different way because there's tragedy around us, right? And it's really helped us understand who we are. The other side of it, you know, um, I don't know about you, but, you know, I get online, I order my stuff for Amazon or Walmart or whatever. I don't even have to go out and get, you know, I don't even go to the store like I did before. It was before it was like, you know, I'm going to go to the store. But now when I walk in because of COVID, I'm like, every time I go into that crowded store, I think about, I don't want to get COVID, right? So That's right. I'd rather That's right. I mean, you, you practically covered a topic I wanted to um, put forward to you is that uh, for professionals and workers and adapting to this new reality, a lot would need to change about their perception, their lifestyle, their um, attitude to work attitude to family around them and you just basically covered that in a nutshell because there is going to be um, going forward there will be a lot of changes impact on lifestyle your you have to adjust your eating habits to remain healthy you have to um, go out more exercise more and i'm looking at all these um, the industries connected to all these changing habits how will they be affected and how will uh investments in those sectors how will they be impacted would there be um, opportunities for online um, stores to increase their business or reduce their capacity, knowing how logistics play a vital role? Um, what will we, will we now have um, drone shipping to make delivery faster? What was going to happen in that light? You know, and all these other things. As an investor, as an investor, can you just maybe give me five industries that you feel will be positively affected? And will benefit from this future of hybrid, just five industries. Well, I mean, it's already happened, right? So, 
uh, retail has been dramatically affected because the you know the the retailers they're it's you know huge impacts on their business. Look at record levels for Amazon, Walmart. The people that accepted the the digital transformation won. At the same time, look at the supply chain, right? And part of the challenge with the supply chain, we couldn't even get a roll of toilet paper. And here we are with quantum computers and can't get a roll of toilet paper. What's wrong with that picture, right? So we didn't have, you know, the whole idea of just-in-time inventory doesn't work when you need toilet paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of strange. And, you know, I don't know about you, but here they were. I saw toilet paper being sold, like four rolls of toilet paper for like $30 right at the time sweet lord well because people were desperate right they they were, got crazy and then water you know i bought like cases of fiji water you know i filled my garages up with water and toilet paper and all this stuff but you know so the supply chain we need to have more insight into the supply chain we need to go all the way from the product the raw material all the way to the retailer and we need to understand what's happening so that's uh something dramatic impact a uh, health tech because we're home, because we can't go out, health tech, the you know, telemedicine, all those kind of things have shifted and moved into another direction. We've got a chance in terms of uh, work. We do remote workforce management with Eva. So how to manage those workforces and keep them happy, how to understand. And, you know, the thing is, like I said, it's, you know, traditionally you do a, a, a review once a year. Why? Yeah. I mean, typically you get a physical, a health physical once a year, but your health changes. What happens if three weeks after you leave the doctor, something happens and it needs to be changed, but you only got to one year, right? To look exactly. until you go back, it's crazy. So what's going to happen is AI is going to give us insights on a real-time basis on everything. We're going to be able to course correct on everything. Uh, cars, you know, if you look at autonomous cars, and what's going to happen in the future? We're not going to be driving. I've seen the, the next generation of autonomous cars. They're configured themselves. So let's say uh, you're in Lagos and uh, you order flowers. It goes out, picks up flowers, takes them over to your girlfriend, drops them off. Then the next situation is you need to pick passenger up, up at the airport. Driverless car reconfigures, lifts its seats up. It says, in advance, it knows that you've ordered uh, the car for five people. It lifts the seats up. It puts water out, right? So there's water bottles ready for the person coming in, cool water bottles. Goes to the airport, picks them up, reconfigures. It's time to go over, you know, somebody, um, uh, Sally and um, Bella want to go to school. It picks the kids up or home from school, picks them up, takes them over to the house, drops them off, right? And so there's going to be a lot more efficiencies in the system with driverless cars. The other thing is sustainability and uh, battery technologies. All this, you know, what's happening is it's one thing to produce the electricity. It's another thing to be able to store it and make it portable. So there are dramatic impacts on um, a battery, you know, 30% a year increase in efficiencies. I know on electric bikes, you know, there's a big boom in, in bikes right now, electric bikes around the world. So bike technology, battery technologies. So it's just, it's everywhere. Then the other thing is cybersecurity, right? Because part of the challenge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I remember that. We're online, but we got to make sure we're protected. So there's going to be new models of cybersecurity that you have not seen yet. In fact, we're an investor in one of those, which is a decentralized cybersecurity. So we're going to have to be quantum computer uh, proof because quantum computers, imagine if you can go after uh, and understand something that would take um, 10,000 years and 200 seconds, you could crack a lot of uh, uh, encryption, right? So now the situation, we're going to have these new cybersecurity models because we're working at home, because we're doing digital currency, right? And you got exactly. your out there, you don't want your money stolen. Right. And now it's a lot easier. It's not like you got to rob a bank. You just go in and steal somebody's wallet. So and I don't mean, you know, electronic wallet, digital wallet. So now we've got to have better cybersecurity systems, which we didn't have before. 
So, and they're going to be different because they're going to forecast where an attack will occur and patch it before it happens. Wow. So those are the, the new there, 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 there seems to be an interesting and increasing amount of um, industries that would benefit only if they just see or had the insights that you have. I mean, cybersecurity, I remember we talked about that some um, editions ago, um, health tech, obviously, um, how it will impact um, emerging countries where the health situation is not even intact. But I mean, in developed countries, you guys have your thing together. Serious impact on um, improving the quality of lifestyle. And, it's uh, going to happen, Nathaniel. You're going to happen. You understand. You're going down through. There's a, you know, Africa's rising, right? Think about it. There's a little over a billion people in Africa and the continent. It's rising. And the thing is, it's going to happen very quickly. So don't think about the negative. Think about how to be part of the positive. So imagine, it doesn't matter where you are, you could get the quality of doctor anywhere, right? So, and then again with education. So you, we talk about education. You can be in Lagos and you can take courses at Harvard, you know, or right. Oxford or Princeton. So it doesn't matter where you're located anymore, right? Or if you want, you can take Coursera courses. You want to learn Python, you want to program. There's all kinds of things. So the world's open up. There's a democratization of opportunities. The key is people taking advantage of it, right? And remember, Mom, Mother Teresa said, it's not about stop war. It's about pro-peace. Think about how to look at it in a positive way. Your life, I can tell you directly, there's, you know, if you if you see movies like The Secret, if you talk about the Pygmalion Fest, the self-fulfilling prophecy, you become what you view you really are. Right? That's right. Whatever that is. And your world starts to retransition so you become that person. That's right. So, and people say, oh, no, that's – and I'm a psychologist too, so I'm telling you directly. right? So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You create your destiny. So with a startup, what are the difference between the successful startups and the unsuccessful startups? The people that, you know, uh, adapt to hybrid work and people don't. So it's really believing that you can do it. I remember I had dinner with the right-hand man of Rupert Murdoch, the the uh, fox, and his name's Andrew Stoginski. And he said, I had, and, and his uh, the guy at the dinner with me was a brother of the founder of Google, uh, Carl Pate, right? He's the brother of the founder of Google and one of the original investors. Anyhow, we were at dinner in Palo Alto, and Stoginski said he bought the Wall Street Journal for $4 billion. And he said, I studied 3,000 entrepreneurs. And I'm sitting there. And I had a couple of glasses of wine. I don't drink that much, but I, I was having fun. And I was a little loopy. But I said, what's one thing that each one of these entrepreneurs, including Rupert Murdoch, have in common? And he said, amnesia. And I said, what do you mean? He said, they never talk about the past. Because the past is an anchor that holds you back. So if you dwell in the past, you never go forward. That's the difference between a successful entrepreneur, a successful worker, and somebody not. They don't think about the past. They look about today, the present, and they look about to the future. And they chart their own destiny. And what happens awesome. is really, it, the, you know, Per Wimmer, who's uh, the founding astronaut of Virgin, he's a um, gazillionaire out of the UK, was recently on my show. He's one, he has the world record for tandem parachuting over Mount Everest at 30,000 feet, where it's like 50 minus, right, Celsius. Um, the guy's done all kinds of things. And he said to me, you create your own destiny. So if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, surround yourself with people that are successful, right, and work in that environment. But don't think about the negative stuff all the time. Think about the positives. And what happens is, the world starts. So I can tell you directly because I've gone through it many times myself, right? And awesome. the world realigns for you. So this, this situation with work, there are people that are complaining, oh, I'm at home, et cetera. But if you start looking at the negative part of it, nothing good's going to happen. Think about the positive. How can you take advantage in a positive way of the situation? How can you make it better? How can you think positively about it? And then positive things happen. Awesome. As in, I feel that this information speaks out to a lot of um, our viewers out there. 
you cannot benefit from dwelling on the negative stuff. I mean, we've gotten to a stage where the world is moving faster than you can think. And the more you dwell on the past, on the negative stuff, the further behind you remain. For investors, if you have a project that you just um, was installing on, never got around to pitching or something, I mean, just take that leap of faith. Come online, reach out to me, reach out to the Latokan team. We'll arrange a pitching session for you. I mean, <coughs> in front of great men like um, Gary and all. And I think today we've come to the end of today's show. Very insightful, very informative. I hope um, for our audience out there, you can easily <coughs> go back to our page on YouTube, LinkedIn, get to watch the videos over again, pick up those little points you might have missed. And I want to tell um, all entrepreneurs that there is a future in hybrid work. Um, like Gary has said, you know, cybersecurity, um, health tech, retail, supply chain, there are several um, chances to make something out of all these industries. So go back home, get busy, get working. And I hope it was informative to um, Gary. Thanks again for time. I hope to have this discussion on another topic very soon. We never um, so Remember, Nathaniel, there's no such thing as hope. I told you that before. Believe in your dreams. We will do it. It'll move forward. Whenever you say hope, there's a chance that something negative can happen. It's okay. about even in the dreams, right? We're going to do it. It's going to happen. And so, And then most of the time, we're start our entrepreneurs, and I've met thousands of them because I have an accelerator. Whenever they said hope, they didn't win. But when they believed in their dreams, they win. Awesome. Did you guys get that? No such thing like hope. Just believe go out it. and believe it. All of you that are out there, go out and do it. Look yourself in the mirror. The, right now, go out, look yourself in the mirror and say, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to do it. I want to change my life. I want to make Africa incredible continent. Each one of you have the ability to be able to change your lives, to change your family's lives, to change the continent. Go out and do it. Let's make humanity better. Let's make life better. Let's live longer and let's be happy. We can all do it. But I'm telling you directly, I've done 17 companies and two unicorns. You have to believe in your dreams if you want to move forward. Preach, preach. I hope you all heard that. And I hope you guys took it in. And uh, that's, I mean, so powerful. Uh, I can't wait to have Gary again for another session. But till then, guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned to our channel. Subscribe on our Facebook, LinkedIn, and um, YouTube. And then um, we'll be back with you next time.